Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Blood of Elves by Andrei Sapkowski. So this is the first Witcher novel and the third book in the series. I've read the two short story collections already and really enjoyed those. And actually I was a little bit hesitant to go into this because of it being uh, a novel as opposed to a short story collection because I think Sapkowski really shines there. And that did kind of, like those fears were kind of not ungrounded, if that makes sense. I don't know whether I just used a double negative there, but my point being, um, yeah, I just like in the short stories, I think he can investigate more different ideas and stuff. However, he does get to go a bit deeper here. We see some more of the politics of the land because um, there's a war looming with the uh, Nilf Guardians. The Witcher kind of wants to remain impassive, but he also kind of can't. Uh, there's also some good stuff with, uh, he has an apprentice who's a girl and people are like judging her because of her gender and stuff. Um, so there's, you know, that ties back to I guess you know oppression in our modern world I'm gonna read you the blurb and then I'm gonna go through and check out some of my tabs and give you my overall thoughts and rating at the end so the Witcher holds the fate of the world in his hands for over a century humans dwarves gnomes and elves have lived together in relative peace but now the races are fighting once more killing their own kind and each other as the threat of war hangs over the land Geralt of Rivia must protect the child of prophecy Ciri from those who are hunting for the extraordinary power she holds a power that could save the world or destroy it this time, Geralt might have met his match. So I thought this was an interesting little insight into the world. Um, so Dandelion, or Dandelion, however you want to say his name, I don't really care. <laughs> the, the minstrel has played some music, and we see the reaction here. Women, touched by the music, sniffed and wiped their eyes on whatever came to hand, which differed according to their standing, profession and wealth. Peasant women used their forearms or the backs of their hands. Merchants' wives dabbed their eyes with linen handkerchiefs, while elves and noble women used kerchiefs of the finest tight woven cotton. And Baron Villibert's three daughters, who had, along with the rest of his retinue, halted their falcon hunt to attend the famous troubadour's performance, blew their noses loudly and sonorously into elegant mold green cashmere scarves. There's a, a bit of tenseness between some of the races and someone makes this little speech here. We are all children of Mother Earth. The grey-haired druid's voice resounded in the silence. We are children of Mother Nature, and though we do not respect our mother, though we often worry her and cause her pain, though we break our heart, she loves us. Loves us all. Let us remember that, we who are assembled here in this seat of friendship. And let us not bicker over which of us was here first. Acorn was the first to be thrown up by the waves, and from Acorn sprouted the great Blue Oberus, the oldest of oaks. Standing beneath its crown, amongst its primordial roots, let us not forget our own brotherly roots, the earth from which these roots grow. Let us remember the words of poet Dandelion's song. Dandelion. Don't care. Another little interesting bit of world building here. It said, um, She slipped the roast chicken onto a trencher and began dividing it skillfully. She used the knife and fork. Dand... The... B <laughs> the bard had only known one person up until then who could eat a chicken with a knife and fork as skillfully. Now he knew how and from whom Gerald had learnt the gnat. Well, he thought, no wonder. After all, he did live with her for a year in Wengerberg, and before he left her, she had instilled a number of strange things into him. He pulled the other chicken from the skewer and, without a second thought, ripped off her thigh and began eating it, pointedly holding it with both hands. Hey, Biggie. Uh, and then Siri and uh, Triss have a chat about lactic acid. Uh, the little girl says she doesn't want to get milk in her muscles, when lactic acid isn't actually anything to do with milk. Uh, hello, Biggie. But uh, I don't know, it pulled me out of it a little bit because that's kind of like sports science-y and I just don't believe they would have known about that in this fantasy world. There's a quote here which I liked. Anyone who doesn't know other languages is handicapped. Shout out to Charlie Heathcote. I'm learning French. He's learning Italian. We're keeping each other inspired on Duolingo. I thought this was an interesting observation and a cool example of how Geralt's mind works. Wilfred Venk was tall, taller than Geralt and near twice the dwarf's height. He wore an ordinary simple outfit like that worn by greaves, bailiffs or mounted messengers, but there was a sharpness in his movements, a stiffness and sureness which the Witcher knew and could faultlessly recognise, even at night, even in the meagre light of the campfire. That was how men accustomed to wearing hauberks and belts weighted down with weapons moved. Venk was a professional soldier. Geralt was prepared to wager any sum on it. I like this quote, uh, Elves, like cats, don't like water. I thought this was a fun little insight into human nature as well. Although the Chancellor's orders forbade students and tutors to drink and play before dusk, drinking and playing took place around the clock in Oxenfurt, for it is well known that if there is anything that makes men thirstier than the acquisition of knowledge, it is the full or partial prohibition of drinking. So yeah, that's about what I've got for you. Um, as I say, I prefer the short stories to the novel, at least this one that I've read so far, but I will be continuing with the series. Uh, I think the world building's great and it asks a lot of good questions. 
Uh, overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, as you can tell, I kind of liked some of the ideas and some of the little lines in it more than the storyline itself. But, um, you know, so so be it. So there we have it. That's what I made of Blood of Elves by Andrzej Szpikowski. As always, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.